Hello, my name is Wade Nimmer, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. Recently, I had the opportunity to work with the Rotary Rose Parade Float Committee, and one of the things we do there is what we call the International President Summit. We do this because at the Rose Parade time, we have four organizations all coming together for that parade. We have the Optimus, the Lions, Kiwanis, and Rotary, of course. And I wanted to share with you this very special occasion because, in fact, we host it, and it is the only time these four presidents will get together uh, informally to meet and talk together for the only time in their year. So with that, I brought some pictures with me I'd like to share with you. The event was actually held at the Huntington Library in Pasadena, and the first picture shows the four presidents actually getting together. At this picture, uh, they get together actually for a private breakfast. The four of them meet, greet, talk to each other, and actually talk about things and challenges that occur during their year. One great outcome of that is that they have talked about actually coordinating a service week, uh, which actually will occur probably in the very near future, where all four organizations will coordinate to do that. The next picture I have is a picture that is actually taken inside of the, um, the Huntington Library. It's, it's a small room that we sit together in. And in this room, we actually get the four presidents together along with the rest of the group. So each of the four groups brings um, some people with them. And I'm going to go over the pictures with that. The first group that we have is a picture of the, um, actually, this is the Lions group. And by the way, in the Lions Club, this is the very first time you will ever see, well, it's the first time Rotary or Lions has had a woman president. So the two largest of the four organizations, um, they have set the trend and they have, are the first one to actually have a woman put into place to serve at the highest office. The next picture we have is a picture that we put together. This group here is the Lions group total. And so the Lions group there, um, you'll see um, get together. Uh, they're a pretty good group of them. They come in each year and this is an annual event. I believe this is the 10th year that we've done this. The next picture is a picture of the Kiwanis group and it's a smaller group. Uh, unfortunately, not a lot of them had the opportunity to get together for that one. The next picture we have is a picture um, showing this is the Optimus group. Uh, the Optimus group, again, has a woman president. This is the first time we had a two and two. And uh, she brought her family along with some staff with her. And the final picture I have is a picture of the Rotary group. This is our team that we put together each year to do specifically this presidential summit, we call it. Always it's in Pasadena. It's been recently at the Huntington Library. I also wanted to show you some pictures um, of that event, and I brought some video, I shot some video footage of that, and I'd like to share that with you now. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look and see what occurred in Pasadena. Okay, uh, now that we are back, we're gonna be asking each of the presidents to come up, uh, tell us a little bit about their organization <laughs> and uh, how the summit actually went. To start with, I'd like to bring the first one up, and that would be uh, Ludren. Uh-oh. Uh, how, how about you start with you, <laughs> um, That would be, uh, let me Ing get this Vidoder. right. Vidoder. Ing Vidoder. It's a little rough uh, with Japanese accents, so we'll go with that. <laughs> but please, come on up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for this kind of introduction. And I'm going to start to explain to you uh, half of the Icelandic population has a name, that's a surname that ends with daughter, because we are daughter of our fathers. And half of the other half of the population is son, son of the father. So uh, I'm Ingvar daughter. <laughs> that's it. But uh, good morning to all of you. And uh, I'm really honored and pleased to be here today. And I thank you so very much for this opportunity. It's really an opportunity. And uh, it's, it's amazing that we are uh, welcoming the new year all together because all of us really want to make difference all around the world and this wonderful meeting we had this morning we could share our successes our issues our uh, worries and we have a lot in common and we all have the the same goal to make a difference in many people's life and we lions we have the motto we serve uh, we are a service organization with 1.4 million members in over 200 countries, as you must know. And um, we celebrated the centennial just a year ago, uh, or uh, we have been celebrating the centennial for quite a number of years, because we think it's a, we have a very proud past, and we really want to build our future on the past. But we are so much forward thinking now. And uh, interesting to have a discussion with uh, the Rotary president because we have so similar themes and vision. 
talking about the ocean, ocean of opportunities and the waves moving us forward and navigating into the future. So because I'm coming from an island like your uh, president of Rotary, so uh, we have a similar experience. And we use all our experience and knowledge from our culture, wherever we go, wherever we serve, because uh, international families like all of us are, we uh, try to unite the people, the members, and the experience we know um, to uh, make a better world. So um, we do it in different ways. And that was really interesting this morning to see that uh, the, the needs and the opportunities are different but we really can't learn from each other. We already yeah. shared a lot of information because we, are, we need to have a quality membership. And that's what we were talking about, how we can get members, more members and better members, improve our clubs in the district. So we can raise more funds, so we can help more people. Okay. That's what we we're, we're talking about. And uh, of course, uh, we come all from different parts of the world. We come from three islands and one big island, United States, <laughs> <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> and uh, this time, I think, uh, first, uh, first time ever, it was 50-50. Four international presidents, two of them women, two of them men. So it was a perfect balance. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really, uh, really, really uh, a pleasure. And uh, it's, be it's a beautiful morning with blue sky, like the blue colors of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the sunshine, it's so beautiful day and I hope today will be very beautiful and I think uh, welcoming the new year with all the roses, that is a strong message for the, to the world. And actually I had to share with you because I'm coming from an island of ice and fire and the lions welcomed me last night by ice <coughs> and fire and the fire was roses. <laughs> oh, nice. So uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. I wish all this organization, all your members around the world, very good success in the future. Like uh, we should, like we mentioned already this morning, we should join hands together and work more together. We do it locally. We should do it even more locally, no globally, and have a long range planning and how we could uh, reach further, how we can, like I say, reach beyond the horizon. I think we can do it and we have to start today to plan for the future, we don't give up, we make a plan for this year, might not work very well, might work better next year and in the future. So I wish you all a very, very good future and thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. Next up we have you if you want us, Polly Lott. I'm so, so excited to be meeting with these guys, the leaders of the world. Uh, you know, I'm here against medical advice, against my doctor's advice. Uh, I, I shared, and my gift to you, that's why I would like to be here, is to share my life and the very purpose of life that I've learned. I have a medical, I have a medical condition. I am a lung cancer stage four patient. By the way, I should be dead by now. You're looking at a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> you know, two years ago, I was diagnosed uh, with this one. But before I was diagnosed with lung cancer stage four, uh, actually it was my daughter who was suffering from lymphoma, another form of cancer. And in the family for one year, uh, they had been crying, especially my wife. It's a good thing she's not here because she's too cold for her. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because I, I tend to become emotional when I share this thing. And I would like to share this with you because this is a very important thing why I'm here. And uh, after this uh, travel, I will be going back to uh, Manila, I'll be back on the 3rd of January. I'll go straight to the hospital, I'll go through my uh, medical examinations, blood examinations, <coughs> double uh, steroid dosage, and then go through chemotherapy. You know, two years ago, uh, my daughter was suffering from lymphoma, another form of cancer, and uh, the family was crying uh, a lot, but I don't cry in front of them. I just cry in one's cave and pray to God. Lord, why my youngest daughter? Why her? So young, so beautiful, so intelligent. Why not just transfer it to me? You know, I learned my lesson. Don't be careful what you pray for. <laughs> that month of August in 2016, God cured my daughter. She was declared with no cancer activity. But uh, at the same week, I was declared with lung cancer stage 4. And everybody was surprised when I said, Thank you, Lord. 
They never realized. I did not cry, accepted my faith, and nobody told me that I'm sick. Uh, but let me tell you, my lung cancer went to my bones, it went to my liver, it went to my lymph node, and went to the brain. And I work with hospitals. I'm a member of the board of five major hospitals. And I know when cancer went to your brain, you should be dead by then, in three months or, or so. So that was uh, two years ago. So I decided to go to chemotherapy, but it did not help me. Then decided to stop it last year, April, and decided to just rely on God and uh, do what he, you know, if he was able to bring me up, give me all these miracles in life, and uh, all the, the things in life, all the blessings, and if you would like to kill me without completing my mission, then so be it. So I decided to buy memorial lots, you know, I was telling and sharing with them. I bought memorial lots, 32 lots, and uh, designed the mausoleum. I even gave instructions of using my Kiwanis official picture mm. on there, and also designed the tomb and everything. And I even put a Kiwanis logo, you know, because I was so uh, obsessed with Kiwanis. I would like the image to be there because all of us, you know, as I shared with them, I, in all my speeches, I always talk about service, the very purpose of life. These are the two things I'd like to share with you guys. That during the time of my chemotherapy, the time that you embraced death, you accepted life as it is, you learned, I learned two things, two beautiful things. The very purpose of life, which is to praise God and serve others. So in all my speeches, I never focus not only on the service of Kiwanis, but also on the service of all people around the world. And I, that's the mission that God would like to me to share with you. So I always talk about it. Of course, at the end of my speech, uh, you have to give it to me. Then when I say, if you are loving to serve children, then you should be in Kiwanis because Kiwanis is all about children. <laughs> Kids need Kiwanis and we're all about serving the children of the world. So that is the one that I'd like to share with you. I have received a lot of gifts. I have no gifts to all the rest of you, but except the knowledge that I am in good hands, I am in the right, with the right people, and in the right company, and I know the world will be better with all you guys around, and uh, we're serving together. So we decided to be, uh, this is not just the first and last meeting that we'll be doing, and uh, I really purposely decided to get this trip, simply because I really wanted to talk, not only to ride, of course I'm excited to ride the float, that's the first time in my life too, and that's in my bucket list. But Basically, I came in because I want to talk to these three really great leaders simply because I would like to share that and hopefully they will share that message of the purpose of life, which is to serve God, which is praise God and serve others. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have uh, Becky Butler Mona from uh, Optimus. Good morning, everyone. Um, it has been absolutely delightful to have the opportunity to spend time with our friends from Rotary. Thank you so much for hosting us this week. Um, it's really a fabulous, fabulous event, um, not only here at the summit, but also uh, yesterday at your float. Um, even my kids got an opportunity to have a <laughs> chance to place some very special things onto the uh, the float so uh, we, we like to think uh, when that wins an award we have a little <laughs> tiny part of it but, uh, but, uh, but also I've, I've also been looking forward to spending time with with all of the um, organization presidents and it was just fabulous having breakfast with you this morning I uh, first had the opportunity just a little over a year ago to attend the service club leaders conference and attended again this year in November and that was my first exposure to being around the leaders of other organizations like Rotary and Lions and Kiwanis and some 15 or so others, about 60 of us typically get together with the combination <coughs> of the volunteer leaders and the professional staff. And I have to say, we have so much more in common than we do anything that is different among us. We all have that desire to make a difference in our own communities and in the world and in each other. And uh, so I'm delighted to have had a chance to spend some time talking about that and, and our ideas this morning about some specific things that we can do to come together and as has been said, for this not to be 
just the first and the last, but hopefully the first in a series of times that we can share ideas, um, explore opportunities on ways we can collaborate more closely in our local communities, as well as at the international level, and to even engage with some of those other service organizations that, again, we have a great deal of in common with. Um, just to tell you a, a little bit, I know that uh, I'm, I'm personally thrilled that my family was able to join me on this trip. Um, that's often a challenge for us since my kids are teenagers and in high school, but they're actually giving up the majority of their Christmas break to spend it with us right here in California, so I'm thrilled. But, uh, and my, my husband, Mike, who's been a partner um, in really almost my entire journey as Optimist. For those who don't know, we actually met through Optimus. He was a, a guest at a membership program when I was membership chair for our Optimus Club. And needless to say, he did join and uh, yeah. has been, uh, been very much a partner ever since. And our kids have grown up in the organization and they're actually now involved in our junior Optimus organization. So um, kind of a family thing, but I think that's probably true for many of the people in the room. So as Optimus, our focus is on providing hope and a positive vision. And we talk about bringing out the best in youth, in communities, and in ourselves. Um, and like others have talked about, we are actually in the process of having our centennial celebration. So I have the distinct honor of being our centennial president. Um, and uh, we actually are having our convention in 2019 in Louisville, Kentucky, where our very first international convention was in 1919. So very excited about that. Um, and, you know, like, like the others who talked about kids and so on, our focus is Optimus. Even though we're a little smaller organization, I believe everything that we all do is very, very significant. So between scholarship programs for young people, um, developing leadership with things like our Junior Optimus International Program, sports programs that many of our clubs do. We have an international junior golf championship as well each year, and a focus on childhood health and wellness, which we've just recently expanded from more of a childhood cancer focus to broader issues around the very great needs for childhood health and wellness. And I think in every one of those areas, and the many others that are done at a local level, there are some tremendous opportunities for us to collaborate together and make an even greater impact. So I really want to thank everyone here for what you do at a local level, what you do in leading your organizations, and for the opportunity to team up with you to make an even greater difference together. Thanks very much, and we look forward to spending more time with you in the future. Good. Thanks. Thank you. All right, thank you. And, and now up we have uh, our host president from Rotary International, Barry, Barry Rassen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is such a pleasure, a truly a pleasure. It's an honor to be here. And I'd first like to thank the float committee for taking the time. You've got a busy week this week, trying to put a float together and win awards that I know you're going to win, and do a fantastic job with all of that, and yet you take the time to put this together. So I'd ask the float committee if you could all stand and we could just say thank you. Thank you. And I know you've done this before, <coughs> but I have a sense with the, the four of us that we want to take this to a new level. As we move forward into the future where the four of our organizations and perhaps some others could continue to meet and grow our relationships to a point where we really can show the whole world that all of us are on the same path of making our world a better place. So I thank uh, President Goodrum. President Rebecca, President Polly, really appreciate you spending the time and coming here to join us, to get together, so that we really can get united. You know, about a year, a year and a half ago, Rotary came up with a new vision statement, that together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our own communities, and in ourselves. And as we talked this morning, all of us have that same vision. We want to work together. We want to bring others together as partners, partners in service. We want to make lasting change. And we want to take action to do that. We want to do it around the world. We want to do it at home. And we want to help each other to do it. And we're all on the same path. We're all going in the same direction. 
This year our theme in Rotary is to be the inspiration. And it, it's, it's amazing listening to us talk about our similarities because I'm thinking, you, you sure we're not all Rotarians here? <laughs> <laughs> in spirit. In spirit. <laughs> but our theme came from a quote from Antoine du Saint-Exupéry who said that if you want to build a boat, you don't start by collecting wood, cutting board, and assigning tasks. You start by awakening in the soul of your workers a longing for a vast and boundless sea. And that's what we're all doing. We're awakening in the soul of all of our members, <coughs> all of our youth, that we want our world to be a better place. We want to make a difference and change our world so that we all can be proud when we look around and see that we've eliminated extreme poverty, we've eliminated hunger. We're all doing that together right now. We just need to bring that a little closer. And when you look at our theme in Rotary, uh, you don't all have a copy in front of you, but basically it's a wave. As you have waves and you're looking at the horizon, our wave shows us as a force of nature, because Rotary is a force of nature, as are the lions, as are the optimists, as is Kiwanis. We're all a force of nature trying to make the world a better place. And under the tip of the wave is the shape of a heart, because Rotary has heart, as we all have heart. That's why we do what we do. And to the right of the logo are the colors of the beaches and the sunsets and the sunrises. That's in the shape of a <coughs> sail, because Rotary has a direction. And our direction, we could all make that direction better by getting closer together as organizations and really remembering that it's not about all of our egos, it's about our world and what are we going to do as individuals and as organizations together to make our world a better place. I'm excited, I have to tell you, if you can't tell that. I'm excited because I see a beginning of a new era in service for the world. I see the beginning of a new field of what we could do together to change our world. So I thank you deeply for all you've done. I thank the float committee again. I am truly have a spirit. You've inspired me and I thank you for all you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, getting them together to do this each year is kind of a challenge. It's something that Rotary really enjoys doing. Uh, we'll be doing it again this coming year and take a look at that. There's a lot of interesting things going on. With that, thank you very much and we will see you next time.